Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Today we're going to install one of our Springer Series automatic cistern pumps in this above ground tank. The first step is we're going to uh, thread in a one inch PVC male adapter into the top of our automatic half horsepower Springer Series cistern pump. And I'm gonna wrap the threading with a Teflon tape, give it several wraps, and I'm gonna thread it into the top of the pump. There's stainless steel, one inch female pipe thread in the top. Hand tighten it as much as I can. And then use a pipe wrench to tighten the rest. The next step in installing the tank is putting in our uh, tank penetration gasket. This is to uh, get a pipe through the tank wall in a watertight manner. And we can set this gasket on any relatively flat surface on the tank. I've made a mark ahead of time and I have an inch and three quarter hole saw um, for our one inch tank penetration gasket. We have our inch and three quarter hole. We're gonna pop in this one inch tank penetration gasket. And then we're gonna, I've marked uh, the distance I want this pipe to go into the tank. So we're gonna push this pipe right through the gasket. Sometimes it helps to put a little dish soap on the end of the pipe to lubricate it or have someone on the other side of the tank hold against it. And as we push this in, it creates a watertight seal from the inside out. It flares out that backside of the gasket and now we have a watertight pipe penetration. For this one inch gasket, you wanna make sure to use one inch PVC. This happens to be a schedule 80 PVC. You can also use schedule 40. Uh, they have the same outside diameter, but you want a rigid pipe through the gasket the next thing we're going to do is make a loop with our pipe. So we're actually going to carry this pipe up to the top of the tank right underneath that lid and then back down into the pump. And the reason we're going to do that is because we want easy access to this one inch union that will allow us to pull the pump if we ever need to service it for any reason. So to make a loop, I have the stand pipe here. I'm going to glue on one inch 90 on either end of this standpipe. It's a good idea to wear nitrile gloves for this. That acetone in the primer is pretty, pretty lethal stuff. So I have 190 glued on this side. This is going to connect to that pipe that we just pushed into the tank wall. Then we're going to put a 90 in going this direction. Next, we're gonna make a couple short pieces. We're gonna cut a couple short pieces here. This ground could not be any more covered in dried leaves. And then we're gonna bend this pipe right back down. So we have the connection point to that stub out that we have through the penetration gasket going up to the disconnection union and then back down. And this is ultimately gonna go right into the top of the pump. Don't worry if you get that out of line because this union can allow for adjustment. Okay, now we're gonna connect our supply line directly into that one inch male adapter that we put in earlier. Gonna prime this. You wanna leave this pipe a little long. You don't have to try to measure it yet. We're gonna set it in the tank before we cut this down to the right size. 
give it a little twist to make sure to spread that cement. All right, now uh, we're going to install this pipe into that stub out that we pushed through the tank wall. It does help to be a slender man like myself to do this part, but we're going to prime the fitting as well as this pipe. You're going to want a mallet close at hand before applying the cement. And I'm going to apply the cement very thoroughly inside this 90 degree fitting. I'm not going to worry about getting the cement on the pipe. I'm just going to make sure I got good coverage inside the elbow. I'm going to push this pipe, this elbow on that pipe and pound it into place with the mallet. Now, I should mention that the placement of that gasket through the tank wall is arbitrary. I just placed it there because it was good, easy access for someone who wanted to, who would want to hook up a garden hose to the spigot when we're all done. But you can, you can have that gasket up towards the top so it's much easier to plumb into place. Okay, the next step in this process is gonna set, be setting the pump inside the tank. I did um, go ahead and tape the wire of the pump to the, the discharge pipe here. It just makes for an easier and cleaner installation. I'm gonna set this, now that this PVC cement is cured, I can lift it by the cement. You can also tie a uh, pull rope onto the top of the pump if you'd like. And now I can see inside the tank where I need to make my cut. And I'm gonna use a marker to make a cut right in the hub of that elbow that we put in. And now I can disconnect this part of the union here. And glue this elbow directly into that discharge pipe coming from the pump. With that elbow set in place, I'm gonna reconnect the union and the plumbing aspect of the pump installation inside the tank is now complete. All right, the, the last step in this process is getting this cord to penetrate the wall of the tank so that we can plug in this pump. And this uh, Springer Series automatic half horsepower pump can be wired directly to an outlet to provide pressurized water automatically for your, your rain catchment system. To get this cord out, we want to do it at the highest point on the tank so that there's no risk of water coming out this, this particular point. We have our overflow line set using our FlexiFit uh, downspout diverter. Um, so we're going to put this, this uh, gland nut in to the, through the, the tank riser here, right off to the side. Again, this is higher than the maximum capacity of the tank, so we're not it doesn't have to be a watertight connection, but it does have to be um, close to watertight. Uh, this is a this is a um, a cord connect connector that will have the as you tighten this nut, that rubber will tighten against the cord to create a, a nice seal. So we're going to drill out a good spot. All right, so we drilled our hole to match the, uh, the size, the, the uh, measurement of the outside of the threads on this, on this uh, cord connector. I'm gonna thread this into the tank wall. You wanna make sure you get it low enough on your riser so that the lid, it, so that this doesn't interfere with the, the closing of the lid. Um, so I'm threading this into the tank wall as far as I can get it. You may need a pair of channel locks to get it tighter. Then I'm gonna unthread this nutted portion 
and at this point it's helpful to have a screwdriver on hand and I'm going to tape this wire to the screwdriver and use this screwdriver to push the wire through this that rubber seal. Just like that makes for a nice fishing rod. I'm going to grab a hold of the wire and then pull the screwdriver back out. And then at this point I can pull the wire through that rubber. And once I have the cord pretty tight, I'll tighten this nut on the cord connector and that will get a good tight seal around that cord. With, the, with this particular pump, there are three bare leads that come on this nine foot of cord. On these three bare leads, you can run this to a junction box and then, um, and then run a power supply directly from the panel to supply the power. Or you can put a, you can wire in a plug onto these uh, three bare leads and plug it into a um, protected outlet. Okay, the last part of this process is putting a, um, in this case, we're gonna use a hose connection spigot on the tank. That way our customer can just hook a garden hose directly to this. And as soon as they open this valve, that pump will sense the demand for flow and will turn on automatically. So I'm just gonna glue this onto the front. I'm gonna double check to make sure that my line is still, that, that I have as much pipe as I wanted to have sticking out. And in this case, I'm just matching it with another tank that we installed. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and cement this into place. You don't have to use this particular valve. We do sell this, this valve here on our website. It's a three quarter inch ball valve. And at that point, we're ready to go. As soon as we power that pump and as soon as water gets in this tank, it is ready to pressurize, ready to supply pressurized water to, directly to a garden hose for ease of watering around the house. This tank, the automatic pump, the valve, the gasket, all this can be found on our website, www.rainbrothers.com. And thank you so much for watching.